Our brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel and the tradition of John. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I came down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me has drawn them, and I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that everyone, anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that has come down from heaven, so that the one who may eat it will not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. 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 So we gather, and as always, we thank God we can be here to pray together and to hear God's word in the scriptures. The other day as I was doing my reading in the morning, reading one of the Psalms, and I don't know, I think it's the first time I ever, this ever struck me, but the exact words that we hear in the Psalms are the exact words that Jesus read in the synagogues. And it's got to give us some sort of, <sighs> we've existed for over 2,000 years. And we hear stories about men and women who have given their lives, people who, um, from what we understand, 11 of the, the 12 original apostles were martyred for their faith. Various other people have given their lives. This coming um, Tuesday, August 14th, we celebrate the feast of Maximilian Kolbe. He was a Franciscan friar in Poland, and he was in the uh, Nazi prison camps, and there was a, a man in there who had a wife with four or five children, and he volunteered to take his place on the, uh, in the death uh, row, in the death for the, those who were condemned to go into the gas chamber. Uh, this was a very simple man who saw that there was a need, and he did it. And today, with our feast day of, of St. Clare, Mother Clare, now she's the co-patroness of this parish, and so many times we probably only say, oh, we guard the parish of St. Francis. It's the parish of St. Francis and Clare. And people occasionally, especially at the hospital, uh, were they married? Were they brother and sister? No, they weren't married, they weren't brother and sister but they were united deeply in their love for Christ, in their love for simplicity. They both were probably born with gold spoons in their mouth, not silver spoons. And they were a difference in age, I think, of about 11 years. And Claire heard Francis preach, and she was very much touched by what he said, by his love for the simple things by his uh, living with the, the lepers and caring for them. And she wanted to do the same thing. But in the 11, 1200s, women who wanted to serve the church as nuns, as religious, would, would had to live in monasteries. They could not go out and do what Francis was doing by preaching. So basically, and she did what might be considered the next best thing, she continued to pray for Francis's mission, for Francis's work. 
And this is exactly what she and her sisters did then and still do now. Uh, the Order of Poor Clares. Um, there's a monastery in Delray Beach, Christ the King Monastery, where the, the poor Clares work and pray. And we get our altar bread from them. And um, she was a, a woman who had tremendous faith. Uh, in her lifetime, or not only in her lifetime, but even today, most religious orders of women, the rules are for them are written by men. And she insisted that she had to write her own rule and presented it to the Bishop of Rome two, three times. And every time it was rejected because it wasn't written by a man. And then finally, two days before she dies, the Pope, the Bishop of Rome, approves her rule for her way of life, for her, for her sisters. And I believe it's the only approved way of life written by a woman for an order of women. So Claire is definitely part of who we are in our parish, uh, having a, a statue, obviously, of her, which was donated by one of our parishioners who moved up to the middle of the state. And uh, from what I understand, he had a real difficult time finding that statue of Claire because for some reason or other, it's not very well publicized. But Claire was a woman of faith. Claire is an example to you and me that no matter how bad things get, when we let God in and open ourselves to God's presence, we truly become what she and Francis were, instruments of peace. Pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.